This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. The most important thing that you can realize right now is that there are no rules in war. Sit with those words. One, uh, it's an incorrect statement. There are rules in war. But leave it to Jenny Thomas, Virginia Thomas, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, to say those words to Mark Meadows, the, 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 at the time, White House Chief of Staff, in, in an effort to overturn the re results of a free and fair and settled American election. A concerted attempt by a woman in the highest echelons of power in the United States, make it a concerted effort to subvert our democracy in cases that were likely going to be before her husband's body. And as completely broken as our system is, we'll keep this PG, Clarence Thomas not only did not recuse himself from the case that did land before the Supreme Court because of his wife's involvement, he voted in Donald Trump's favor. He was the only justice to vote in Donald Trump's favor. I'm going to read a little bit from this, what is up to this point relative to the January 6th insurrection, one of the most important stories to come about. I'm going to read from this Washington Post article. Virginia Thomas urged White House chief to pursue unrelenting efforts to overturn the 2020 election text show. In messages to Chief of Staff Mark Meadows in the weeks after Election Day, the wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas called Biden's victory, quote, the greatest heist of our, of our history, and told him that President Donald Trump should not concede. Jettisoning any adherence to democracy, to the results of a free and fair election. And there are, that is the least of the things that have been uncovered. Uh, they're still hanging out there, this, this pause in, in communication between them. Because the, the text messages that we have, the 29 or so text messages we have, are the ones that were provided by Mark Meadows, to the January 6th House Select Committee. He chose which ones to give, which indicates to me the ones that were not given, the ones we are not privy to, are even more damaging than what you're getting ready to hear. Reading a little bit from this article, Virginia Thomas, a conservative activist married to Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, repeatedly pressed White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows to pursue unrelenting efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election in a series of urgent text exchanges in the critical weeks after the vote, according to copies of the text messages obtained by the Washington Post and CBS News. The messages, 29 in all, reveal an extraordinary pipeline between Virginia Thomas, who goes by Jenny, and President Donald Trump's top aide, during a period when Trump and his allies were vowing to go to the Supreme Court in an effort to negate the election results. In the November 5th message to Meadows, I'm not going to read all of the messages, by the way. These are the ones that struck me as the most egregious, the most damaging, the most disrespectful and disregarding of our democracy, of your vote in an attempt to reverse your vote, to steal the election. In the November 5th message to Meadows, Thomas went on to quote a passage that had circulated on right-wing websites. This is what she texted him. Quote, Biden crime family and ballot fraud co-conspirators, elected officials, bureaucrats, social media censorship mongers, fake stream media reporters, etc., are being arrested and detained for ballot fraud right now and over coming days 
and will be living in barges off Gitmo, Guantanamo Bay, to face military tribunals for sedition. This is the wife of the Associate Justice on the Supreme Court, Thomas. And she's saying that the Biden family and people like me were being rounded up, detained, to be shipped off to live in barges off the coast of Cuba, awaiting military tribunal. This is nutter butter shit. The text messages received by the House Select Committee do not include a response from Meadows. Of course, because he's the one who provided these text messages. The next day, November 6, Th Thomas sent a follow-up to Meadows. Do not concede. It takes time for the army who is gathering for his back. Now, we, we know what army ended up showing up, and that is the radical mob of freaks and geeks who attempted to overthrow the United States government in their failed coup attempt at the Capitol on January 6th. Their attempt to overturn a free and fair election encouraged by Jenny Thomas, funded by Jenny Thomas. Jenny Thomas, who also attended the Stop the Steal rally. It is unclear if Meadows responded to that message. Thomas then turned to her frustrations with congressional Republicans and said she wished more of them were rallying behind Trump and being more active with his base voters, who were furious about the election. She wrote, House and Senate guys are pathetic too. Only four GOP House members seen out in street rallies with grassroots, Gomert, Jordan, Gosar, and Roy. She appeared to be referring to Republican House members Louis Gomert of Texas, Jim Jordan of Ohio, Paul Gosar of Arizona, and Chip Roy of Texas. A handful of dolts, to be sure. The following day, November 14th, Thomas sent Meadows material she said was from Connie Hare, chief of staff to Louis Gomert. It is not clear if she was passing on a message from Hare or sharing Hare's perspective as guidance for Meadows. The text message seems to quote Hare's belief that the most important thing you can realize right now is that there are no rules in war. And again, setting aside that that is untrue, it goes to their mindset. Ethics do not matter. Conflicts of interest do not matter. Democracy does not matter. The very rule of law that her husband has sworn oath to protect does not matter. What matters is winning. What matters is reinstating Donald Trump extra-constitutionally to office, even though he lost by seven plus million votes. I mean, he didn't win the popular vote to begin with in 2016. What would, what would make anyone suspect he would win the popular vote this time? Ginny Thomas was a champion for Sidney Powell. Nutter butter extraordinaire, believing that Hugo Chavez, the dead leader in Venezuela, had something to do with the election in 2020. This war is psychological, psyop. Hare said Thursday she did not have any specific recollection of that text message. Of course, she didn't. Of course. Oh, I, I don't recall. What? I don't know. I'm a traitor to my country. I'm a treasonous actor, chief of staff for a goober like Louis, Go Louis Gobert. The text exchanges with Thomas that Meadows provided to the House committee pause after November 24th, 2020 with an unexplained gap in correspondence. With an unexplained gap in correspondence. You know, we all know what the unexplained gap is. 
Those are the text messages that were the most damning. The committee received one additional message sent by Thomas to Meadows on January 10th, four days after the Stop the Steal rally. Thomas said she attended and, and uh, the deadly attack on the Capitol. In that message, Thomas expressed support for Meadows and Trump and directed anger at Vice President Mike Pence, who had refused Trump wishes to block the congressional certification of Biden's Electoral College victory. He refused because he does not have said authority. He does not have the power. It is not one man's duty to choose who won the election. This is a democracy. For the hate watchers, a constitutional republic, which is a form of democracy. Quote, We are living through what feels like the end of America, Thomas wrote to Meadows. Most of us are disgusted with the vice president and are in listening mode to see where to fight with our teams. Those who attacked the Capitol are not representative of our great teams of patriots for DJT. And then she added, amazing times, the end of liberty. The most important thing that you can realize right now is there are, there are no rules in war. One, this is not a war, Jenny Thomas. This is the playing out of the democratic process. This is one candidate prevailing over another and a group of violent crybabies snapping into action based on motivations from you and people like you to attack our democracy, to attempt to overturn a free and fair and settled American election in order to reinstate, to reinstall extra-constitutionally a fascist, a white supremacist, a dullard, but a fascist and white supremacist nonetheless. And here we have Justice Thomas, mysteriously, coincidentally, in the hospital right around the time of this controversy. If there was ever a justification for impeachment of a, of a sitting associate justice on the Supreme Court, this is it. And if, it, if, if, there, if this offense does not rise to impeachment, then there isn't an offense that rises to impeachment. The fact that he did not recuse himself is grounds for removal. Not the fact that he has an activist wife, or a dumb dumb for a wife, or a radical for a wife. No. The fact that he is close to this and did not recuse himself because of the clear conflict of interest. Do you think she was going home and not talking to her husband about what she was texting the White House Chief of Staff? I think not. What do you think, though? I'd love to know. You can call. Leave me a brief voicemail. 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I have said this for the past over a year, that our democracy is in peril, that we are perched precariously on the edge of collapse. And it is because of people in power who are pushing us in that direction, who are not respecting, revering the rule of law and democratic norms, who want nothing more than a thousand years of Republican rule, whether it be democratically or not. Tell me what you think on social media. I am at Dollamore just about everywhere. Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. And if I bring you value, if I bring you some information that you can carry on into your week, talk to your family and your loved ones, your coworkers and your neighbors about to get them active, please consider supporting my work right here on the platform. You can click the join button below this video, whichever side it is, whichever color it is and become a channel member for as little as $1.99 a month, or you can click on over to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. That is not just for the podcast, although it does support my work on the podcast, I doubt it. Uh, I would appreciate it. 
I love you guys. I appreciate you very much. I'll see you next time. Until I do, be genuine. And take care of one another.